In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to edit a video track that has repeated motion that you want to match with a pre-recorded audio track. Let me explain. I have a video that you see on the screen of a hammer hitting a nail. I've used it in a couple of tutorials and I found an audio track that has a beat that almost matches the hammer, but not exactly. I'm going to show you a short clip and you're going to see that the hammer beat does not quite come down every time the beat of the music would like it to. Now, how do you solve a problem like that? Well, in this case, since it doesn't have people talking and lips moving or something like that, I can get away with a, a technique where I'm going to segment the video. Because you see, what I've done here is I've put timeline markers every place where the hammer strikes the nail for an additional time. And so I found those frames, and I have a video on that where you use the comma key and period key to move frame by frame, and isolated those places in the video. But you notice each of these uh, timeline markers does not match the spike in the audio track. And so how do you get them to match? Well, if the hammer blows were perfectly rhythmic and equally spaced, then I could get by with using Audio Director to adjust the audio track by lengthening it or shortening it. But that won't work in this case because the timing of the hammer blows is irregular where the beat of the audio is regular. So what I'm going to have to do is split the video track so I've already done that here at the very first beat. I'm going to go to this second place here and I'm going to do a control T with a timeline marker there and we'll split that at that point. I'll go to the third one and we'll do control T again and I'll repeat the process. So I split this into segments every time the hammer comes down, I'm at a new segment. Okay, now I have each of these segments. Now, what I can do at this point is I can change the length of each of these independently of the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this timeline marker. I'm at 8 seconds, 12 frames. I'm going to move the timeline marker and put it right here where I have an audio spike. And if I hover over that, I have 8 about eight seconds and six frames. So I'm six frames longer here. So I'm going to shorten this segment by six frames. I click on it, I click on Tools, and then choose Power Tools and Video Speed. And then in the Video Speed option, I need to shorten it by six, so it would be 1.09. and I'll click on the OK button in the lower right corner. And now this should come down right at the, the hammer blow will be right at the peak of the music. The next one I need, need, and again, now I can ignore the timeline markers because they're all off, everything's shifted to the left. But I can still click here and I see I'm at nine seconds, 21 frames. I move back, mic is 914. So I need to shorten this about six times. I'll click on it, click on Tools, Power Tools, Video Speed again. Activate the Video Speed Control and reduce this by six, which would be 1.07. And click on OK. Now I, now I move to the, where the next beat would be. And if I hover over that, I see it's approximately 10 seconds, 27 frames. I have a heavy beat here at 1023, so I only adjust this by four frames. I click on it, click on Tools again, Power Tools, Video Speed, and I'll shorten this by four frames. Click on OK. And so that's the process I repeat to try to get the 
split of these frames to match the particular place where the audio spikes. I'll pause the video and then we'll continue the process. So I'll play this again and you can watch and hear the, how the timing works out. In this case, the audio should spike every time the hammer hits the nail. This is a good technique if you have video that can handle a little bit of shrinking without having it look rather odd. But you notice I was able to get the timing of the hammer blows in each case lined up with the beat of the music. Thank you. 